This is actually a really good question. There's a really good book that just came out on this. It's called, Is God a Moral Monster? Uh, if you're interested in these sorts of uh, questions about the Old Testament, etc. And um, this particular uh, question here is interesting. If God is loving, why did he give word to those in the Old Testament to kill every man, woman, and child? Uh, and I believe this question is, is talking about the Canaanites, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think maybe the better uh, question would be, if, if God is just, how could he not uh, judge people? And the whole uh, thing with the Canaanites was not about um, ethno, uh, it wasn't some sort of, um, like what happened against the Jews, you know, it wasn't based on their ethnic ethnicity per se. It was actually a moral judgment. So that was just God um, casting his judgment upon these particular people um, who uh, he wanted, um, you know, he wanted brought to justice at that point in time. So it's not a matter of him being loving or not. This is really more of a question about his justness, not his lovingness. You can be loving and just at the same time. It's not a contradiction. Yeah, this is a profound question, but let me just ask you again, uh, just a straightforward question back to you. What would this mean? If it's the case we have these uncomfortable passages in the Old Testament, at best what it means is, to get back to a few questions ago, perhaps there's some corruption in the historical record. Maybe uh, the Jews, as they reported these incidences, were simply nationalizing God in the name of Israel, and they made a mistake in terms of uh, championing their cause in the name of God. It wouldn't go to show that God didn't exist, that Jesus wasn't risen from the dead, and so forth. So this, in, a, in essence, might be a red herring. If you're weighing this as, should I be a Christian, that ought not to figure in that calculation. Now, that having been said, let's take this on directly. And, and Tanya had mentioned the book, Is God a Moral Monster? The author's name is Paul Kopin, and he's done an extensive amount of research. I've read his scholarly uh, exchanges with Wes Morrison and others who were basically trying to come at him with these particular objections. So his resource is invaluable. Let me just give you one specific example on the context. See, we see these sort of commands saying, well, goodness, to slay children or to enslave women and things of that sort, these seem horrible. Remember, religio historical context, when we say things like slavery, it isn't African-American slavery. This is a slavery of an entirely different breed. Listen to what the um, associate professor of religion, Gunther Haas, has to say with respect to slavery. He says, with their, with their master's approval, chattel slaves could possess their own property, engage in economic activity, purchase other slaves, hire free persons and marry free individuals. They would even attain their freedom if their masters agreed to this possibility. Israel's treatment of chattel slaves indicates that these slaves are considered human beings. Male slaves may participate in the Passover meals and in other ceremonial expressions of worship. Slaves must be given rest on the Sabbath. In contrast to the laws of other ancient Near Eastern nations, slaves who flee their owners and come to Israel are not to be returned to their masters, nor are they to be oppressed but they are to be allowed to live wherever they please. The slave's personal dignity is also evident in the prescriptions concerning personal injury, since the punishments for mistreatment are meant to restrain the abuse of slaves. The personal rights of slaves override their master's property rights over them. And the lesson is, is that in some cases, I'm not speaking to all of them, in some cases when God commands certain seemingly awkward things like slavery, this was an act of mercy in the ancient world, not an act of trying to belittle or to demean or to uh, suppress certain people. The other thing is, is when you consider that God takes the lives of, say, women and children, I kind of think God is already doing that. It's just the means that are under negotiation. And I don't mean to be cold or complacent about that, but we have to recognize that with God is the prerogative, uh, uh, the prerogative of life. He can give and take it as he so wills. I, God has no reason to let me survive one more minute, much less another 10 years. 
just uh, negotiating the means of my demise is entirely within his prerogative. And therefore, I, I shouldn't at all think that these seemingly awkward commands are somehow uh, dismissive of the existence of God, at least not in here.